fem, no? Good afternoon. Welcome to the 33rd graduating class of the full-time MBA program. That was easy. Uh, DICE party members, students, faculty, families, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Consul de Brazil, Honorable Consul de Alemania, Honorable Consul de Estados Unidos, and a very warm welcome to family members and students from around the world who have been unable to join us but who are following this event live. Before we start, the ceremony, I'd like to um, have some words of appreciation for those who have been quietly supporting the graduates today, be those families, significant others, or friends who have counseled, supported, and encouraged to today's graduates in various forms and at different times. I think we should, they deserve our deep recognition. And so let's uh, the ceremony commence. And uh, to do this, we're going to be uh, giving the floor to three MBA student representatives. Mr. Bob Kramer, student representative. <laughs> Mrs. Christina Kraus. and Mr. Banel Levin. Before we start, we had many requests last night. The three of us won't dance the Harlem Shake tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, friends. Good evening, friends who are following us through the internet, and especially those ones who can't attend tonight. Adrian, it's the first time I'm flustered. The night I worked on a speech, I was watching the news, and I was confronted with the usual stories, the discussion around the Euro crisis, tensions in global politics, and the bad weather forecast for Germany. In times like these, I realized the privilege we had during our time here at ESADE. Venezuelans and Americans, Chinese and Taiwanese, Israelis and Saudis, Germans and Italians collaborating on a daily basis, building friendships, seeking solutions and tackling challenges. Eighty months ago, 170 individuals from 45 different countries went up on a, an amazing journey a life-changing journey. But what, actu what actually happened during these tremendous 18 months away from home? Well, we overcame many challenges. Remember the Arama queues, the Costa case, the Chichuelo case, or the food fiasco at the Chinese New Year's dinner? <laughs> Sunny Hu, two things. I love Chinese food, and you're a great fella. But we shouldn't forget about all the classes, the meetings, the projects, endless discussions, multicultural conflicts, exams, interviews, case competitions, and the extracurricular activities in the business and sport clubs. It's worth mentioning the achievements uh, we accomplished. We won, we won and ranked among the winning uh, teams in many case competitions. We successfully organized disruptive events like Quest for Talent, the Emerging Markets Conference, and the Innovation Summit. 
fostering the interaction with global and innovative companies. More than 10 tracks have been organized to Israel, Saudi Arabia, Russia, the UK, Germany, and the beautiful country of India. It allowed us to broaden our horizon and step, step beyond our own comfort zones in order to interact with local people, companies, and governments. Also, the class of 2013 managed to raise a whooping 8,740 euros for charity. A small contribution came from the sexy Movember calendar with beautiful men in it. So ladies, look around. Uh, we have been quite lucky. But the whooping amount, or the big amount, was uh, contributed by the infamous Isada Got Talent event. So thank you very much for that. I could ramble on and on and on about all the problems we have solved, challenges we tackled, and achievements we accomplished. However, one of the most important lessons over the past 18 months was being pushed outside our com comfort zone. The unknown environment we have been exposed to represented the true challenge we were facing. It made us critically assess ourselves, our goals in life. It helped us to unveil unforeseen opportunities, and it allowed us to grow and evolve as individuals. In a way, it has been a, a huge chemi chemical reaction, the ingredients being the beautiful city of Barcelona, a forward-looking business school, which in order to react required a unique set of, uni of individuals in order to, uh, as, it, as its catalyst. Well, catalyst, why do I use this word? Let's face it, guys. <laughs> you accepted me, this guy wearing green shoes, framboise trousers, pink shirts, <laughs> the guy who was once dancing in a skirt at one of these parties. <laughs> you welcomed me to your family, and that's the message. We have been more than MBA colleagues. We have been a family, helping each other throughout these turbulent times. ISADA is more than getting ready for the next great job. It's about building true friendship. I love you guys. Thanks. So if it wasn't for Christina and I's intervention, Bob would have come on stage with his pink tie, and only his pink tie, <laughs> for the 2013 calendar. <laughs> it's a great honor to be here talking on behalf of Section C, the last and undoubtedly the coolest of the bilingual classes of the MBA. Muchas gracias, familia. Today it is my job to build on Bob's cruise down memory lane and talk about the present moment, our graduation. I'm reminded of when I graduated in Johannesburg and my mother gave me a speech to honor that uh, achievement. Now we all know what mother's speeches are alike and my mother's speech was no different. It was potent, it was short. It went something like this. Son, I've done my part. <laughs> so I'm going to try to follow the tradition of great speeches by Swazi mothers and keep mine short and to the point. What I really want to say to you today is that this is the beginning of you. In completing the MBA, you have given yourselves a very solid foundation to grow and to reach for your dreams. You survived business law, accounting one and two, business evaluation, and entrepreneurship. <laughs> You've rubbed shoulders and sometimes bumped heads with people from diverse backgrounds and very different cultures to you. As such, today you have the hard and soft skills to bring some order in the chaos that the world finds itself in. Take a bold step forward.
because this is just the beginning of you. Over the past 18 months, we have grown to be friends, some of us friends with benefits. <laughs> These friendships will be tested by time and they will be tested by distance as we take on different paths into the future. Really, this is the true beginning of us. As other MBA faculty and staff have done their part, our parents and our families who join us here today, they've also done their part in giving us the right values and nurturing our talents. The graduation committee, who have tirelessly worked to bring us all here together, they've also done their part. Thank you. We're very, very thankful. Today marks our, step, our steps from being students to being businessmen and women, to being mothers, fathers, and members of our community. We hope to make you all proud. I hope that this is just the beginning of a more curious, a more enduring, and a healthy you. Thank you. Dear class of 2013, today is a very special day. To me, it is so very special because of many things. It's so, many, so special to me because the past and the future connect. It is the day on which we move on in our lives. Today, we officially step into the post-MBA life. We came here to accomplish this MBA program, not only because of the great time we would have here. We decided to go for the MBA because we wanted to continue to grow, both on a personal and on a professional level. This growth, for sure, brings more choices, more freedom and more power. And it also brings more risks. Therefore, let's not forget where we are coming from, no matter how successful we are. Let's not lose faith in ourselves if we fail and fall. For example, the job search may be slow right now for some people and might not fulfill everyone's dreams. But it is now that we have to prove our perseverance, our open-mindedness, our open-mindedness to accept new unforeseen challenges, and we have to prove courage. Courage to think in new ways, Courage to do things differently. Courage to inspire others and to enjoy each single, maybe even stressful day and courage to live it with passion. Let's have the courage to dream. Let's have the courage and the endurance to fight for our dreams and for our goals. If we lose, let's keep the faith. And if we win, let's be humble and grateful. Our personal and professional growth also brings something else along. It brings responsibility. Not only responsibility towards ourselves, but towards businesses, organizations, and people. People, that's the most important one. But we will bear more and more responsibility in the future. But the good news is, guys, we are ready for it. We are ready for shaping the world in which we are living, in a very successful, in a sustainable, and in a human way. Let's assume this responsibility. Let's assume it with passion, with joy, but also with humbleness. We should not forget how privileged we are to have access to this education and to this life that we are living. Let's be humble, since there's still so much we have to learn. Bearing the title of the MBA does not mean we can save the world, but it will help us having an impact on this world in the very positive way. And we cannot do it alone. 
We cannot do it by ourselves. Let's continue to stand together and support each other in golden and good times, but also in times when things become a little bit more difficult, when alternatives and different solutions have to be found. We now have a great network. We have insights and we have knowledge that helps us. We can achieve a lot, a myriad things. That's for you, Paris. We believe in, if we believe in ourselves and if we work hard. We can achieve a lot if we continue to help, support, and inspire each other, such as we did in the last one and a half years. As Banile said before, this is only the beginning. This is the beginning of you. And it's even more. This is the beginning of us. As Bob mentioned, it is the beginning of a lifelong friendship and of a strong network all over the world. This is only the beginning of a path that helps us grow. This is only the beginning, and it has already been fantastic. Sir Winston Churchill put it like this. Now, this is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end. But it is, perhaps, the end of the beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, Christina, and Banel for these moving speeches. And now I'd like to give the floor to Professor Gloria Bagliori, SADI MBA Executive Director. Hello, everyone, again. I'm so happy, and as I told you yesterday, this is such a nice venue to have this special event for such a special class, as I said yesterday. But I'm not going to be long because we had already, uh, we talked long, very long yesterday. I just wanted to send you a, a, a couple of messages. That is, uh, you have to understand, and I know you do, that you are privileged. Uh, you have the privilege to, to have a very nice education. And uh, after that nice education in your undergrad, you had the possibility to do a post, uh, a come here to do a, your MBA. So you, you would be considered, as we said, is like elite from a professional perspective. So you, you have some duties. And uh, on those duties is that when you come here, you know that you came to change your life. We think that uh, we transfer you the need that you are going to change organizations. But at the end, what you're going to do is you're going to change the world. This is your duty. It's a, a nice world that we live in, and you are privileged, you're an elite, and this is something that you have to do. On the other side, I would like you to, to remember and refresh that uh, this is a, a new community that you belong to, that is Esade. Some of you are parents, others you will be in the near future. When you have your first child, it's like your heart is full with the love for your first child. And when you have your second child, you you think you will never have space for that second child. And you find it because your heart grows. This is the same with Esade. No? You had already your studies, so your heart grows. So where is Esade in your heart? You are our ambassadors. Just cherish, nourish it. This is your new love. This is your, your new child. So I hope you will be as proud as we are of you for your achievements with your MBA and please do what you are supposed to do, change the world. Thank you. Uh, we shall now proceed with the presentation of the certificates and the sashes. The names of the graduates will be read out by Mrs. Melissa Handley, SAD MBA Associate Director.
dicho que de empezar. Venga, sí. Arun Abraham, Mohamed Ahmed, Youssef Al Arani. Anas Al Asuzi, Mohamed Al Balwi, Yosef Al Menayes. Khalil Al Namari, Lotem Alon, Sara Amaro Pais. Cristina Aragues, Abubakar Atiku. Um, sorry, just a quick mess- message, actually. The first name I read out, could they please go to Gloria? Because the certificates are in that order. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Mohanad Basodan. Berti. <laughs> ben Banaste. Frederic Bender. Ashley Bentlin Smith, Joseph Bioska, Eleanor Blackmer. <laughs> Justin Bon. Jordi Bordayo, Madalina Bortoroga. <laughs> Rene Bravo, Taisa Brass, Stephen Broadbent. Arnau Calduc, Pedro Carvalho, Tania Carvalho dos Santos.
Carlos Cazura, Cynthia Chacon, Filippo Chacucci. Yifan Chen, Vinicius Tipulu, Robert Kramer. Melina Coutina, Patrick David, David de Nevasquez. <laughs> Eva del Hoyo, Swagata Dar, Georgi Jalef. Ariel Doktorovic, Sharon Dowdell, Aaron De Silva. Magdalena Dibal, Daniel Dietz da Cuna, Christy Elliott Heidman. Branislav Erdeli, Olukayudi Falasinu, Elizabeth Falco. Enrique Falcon, Mark Fare, Marta Figueras. Tobion Folgero, Paul George Frederick, Svetlana Ganina.
Andrés García Martínez, Victor Galdres, Shira Genzel. Charles Gibson, Clara González Lomas, Joaquim Grau. Barbara Gruber, Elan Grunfeld, Loana Guapiazu. Angel Hajef, Nazith Hagar, Pranay Hariharan. Karen Harris, Florence Heinen, Chingxia Shu. Govind Ja Kumar, Georgi Giorgoni, John Horisti. Ashok Kadam, Sushant Kaisa, Alicia Kerbrat. Ankur Kandelia, Ibrahim Kashogi, and Kim.
Johan Kleining, Tomoyoshi Kodama, Alexander Kolish. Katharina Kraft, Christina Kraus, Pawan Kumar. Bartosz Laboga, Daniel Langer, Blake Lawson. Maria Lefa, Nafsika Lefa, Alvaro Leon. Vanele Levin, Martha Lombera, Roberto López. Felipe Machado, Mauricio Machado, Alicia Malen. Rutika Menon, Lucas Sobral, Andras Miklos.
Ingrid Milan, Kyoko Minagishi, Mohamed Moharak. Nicolás Monasterio, Tatiana Monerat, Diego Mosqueira, Feras Nagadi, Juana Ocampo, Jose Oliveira. Marcos Paiva, Alexis Pajot, Dominic Pascasio. Clara Pastor, Ana Maria Pérez, Tony Pham. Olena Pochicailo, Andrew Pollen, Juan Francisco Posse. <laughs> Raul Pratap, Juan Pujadas, Rafaela Arafo. Sebastiano Ravano, Juan Carlos Reulen, Juan Pablo Restrepo. Benjamin Ratigan, Juan Rigol, Perarius.
Jessica Rivas, Margaret Robb, Oriol Roda. Oscar Rodriguez, Daniel Rurig, Paula Rondon. Javier Rubiralta, Natalia Rushailo, Celia Sanchez. Ami Sangvi, Kohei Sato, David Shuster. Pasquale Scopeliti, Carlos Serrano, Parves Sidiki. Victoria Spies, Carl Justin Sturmer, Gerard Subira. Samash Sawo, David Teal, Robin Thomas. <laughs> Fabiana Tome, David Tick. Ginovir Torok. Lilac Travelsi, Rafael Valdez, Manuel Vidal Rivas. Nicholas Wallet, Andreas Weinberger, Sunny Wu.
Nazif Hagar. And last but not least, for all everybody watching us today and for those who would have loved to join us and who unfortunately couldn't make it, who have also graduated with a class of 2013 today, we'd like to congratulate Alexander Antoni Sam, Tika Chant, Meng Shi Shen, Shadi El Abdallah, Sarah Fishley, Adrian Garcia. John Hurley, Gloria Lopez, Michael Richardson, Emre Sari, Vibhav Srivastav, Sishav Sun, Pedro Torres, Christoph Snopnopoulos, Rigi Varghese. Congratulations. I'd like now to, to give the floor to Mr. Magnus Shebing, CEO, creator, and co founder of Lazy Town Entertainment. Um. Hello, uh, it's fantastic to be here, and thank you for the invitation. For me and my colleague, Halli, who is here, he is actually MBA, already graduated, and uh, he take all the decision for me now. So I hope one day I can basically work for you guys, one day. So I'm going to turn this on. I can never stand still. Is it on? Is it on? Yes. Can I move? Can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. So, um, my name, basically, I don't know if you know anything about, I need a clicker, it's here, perfect. Let's test it. Let's test it. Let's test it. There it is. So, my name is Magnus Kevin. I basically, I'm not really sure, click it, yeah. I create the only entertainment brand dedicated to kids' health in the world. Most, almost 20 years ago. I don't know, this is not really working. Call Lazy Town. I don't know if you know Lazy Town. How many know Lazy Town? Ah, so this is going to be an interesting journey. People ask me because you created something called Lazy Town, then you must be always lazy. And I say, no, I'm not really lazy. Because you are lazy when you don't care anymore. You're lazy when you say, I'm not old. I don't care about old people. Or I'm, I don't have kids. I don't care about kids. Or you say, I don't live in Spain. I don't care about Spain. Or you would say, 
I'm rich, I don't care about poor. Then you are lazy. You are lazy when you don't care. When people walk just by, past something, you are lazy. I have never been lazy in my life. And none, nobody in my company is lazy. No one. Everybody work really hard. Everybody think about things all the time. So never be lazy. Never. I have actually a good news for you. Fantastic news. But I also have a bad news. Let's start with the good news, yes? Okay. The good news, you are great. Whoa! Let me see it. Yes! The, okay, the good. Anything is possible. Now you're coming out of the school, anything is possible. Don't let anyone tell you it's not possible. It's the saddest language, basically the most sad words in every language is, is it's not possible. So if, if you work for anybody who tell you it's not possible, quit immediately and go and work somewhere else. Is it over here? Yeah. The bad news. Are you ready for the bad news? Uh, it's up to you. It's now all up to you. You cannot blame anyone. That's why I want to use the opportunity to thank your mom and dad who are here. I want you to give a big applause for your mom and dad. Come on. Whoa! Uh, if this is a school, school is a little bit old-fashioned, so I was really happy when you invited me to come here, because I really wanted to come, because this is a different school, this is a different thinking, and the thinking is a little bit like, in the old days, this used to be a little bit like this, I'm trying to find where it is, da, da, da. otherwise you are brilliant. Or you basically you are stupid. And the line is 4.9. Then you fail. So this is how school system put people in categories with a diploma. If you really think about how school was made, it was made for factories, 1860s to 1930s. It was a system that we still have a bell who ring in, ding, 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 in schools for kids. That kids go to school like a, like a bell, like a factory. It's an old-fashioned way of thinking. And if you really think about it, it is quite interesting. The school system, you give you some great, you're a, this is your MBA, that's who you are. It's not the truth. Who you are is actually what you're going to do with it. That's how you really are. So don't say that you are a doctor or MBA. Don't really use that. Let people see who you are, basically how you become in the world. You don't need the diploma, basically you don't. It's fantastic, congratulations. It's great and well done. But it's not you. It's basically a diploma. So what you do is that we need a new thinking in Spain around the world. We need a new thinking for the whole world. We need somebody with ideas. We need people who have so solutions. We need people who come up with new ideas because the old system doesn't work. We need you guys to come out and change the world. And we basically need you. You need to go out there and figure out with a new thinking how you are going to take the next generation to live better lives. This is really, really important. So if you really ask a kid in a kindergarten school, you would go there. You say, how would you solve, solve this problem? The kid would give you 500 ideas. 500. If I give this to a kid and I say, what would you do with this? They would say, I'll use it as a hat. I also use it to swim with it. They use 500 ideas. When you start to go to kindergarten school, you start to be seven years old or almost go to school in the beginning, maybe seven to 10. What happened is that I ask you the same question, you would give me 200 ideas. If I would go to you when you were maybe 14, you would give me 50. When you are a doctor in something, you give me one idea. It's only one solution. So I ask you, 
Try to be a kid inside. Try to be really a kid. Find a kid in yourself that you smiled a lot. You had fun. You played. You went out for a smile. Don't be serious. So what I love about you, when you came up on stage, you're happy. You're like jumping. Woo-hoo! This is extremely important. Life is too short to have boring things. It's too short. So, go out, spread your message as much as you can. Spread your wings, do anything you can, because no one who can tell you you cannot do it. Think about this. This is a theory I'm having. I have a little theory. Let's say this is a swimming lane in a swimming. So, each lane is a different businesses. Maybe you are fantastic in business. Maybe you know everything about weddings. Maybe you know everything about cars. Maybe you know everything about clothing. So, whatever you learn in life, What you need to do is to learn the axis, is how to learn, is how to use opportunities, how to see things with open eyes. There's always opportunities. So if you really think about it, a lot of people think, maybe I know a lot about one thing. I don't know anything whatsoever about... Uh, uh, cats. Then I don't know anything about astronauts or anything. So it's like this. This is, I met a lot of people who are like that. How many lanes can you have open in your life? How many lanes, swimming lanes in your life? Can they be 1,600? Can they be two? Can they be 6,000? How many? So what I th- think is interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm looking for this. Where is it here? So this is so, so some people know nothing about nothing. And then they know almost nothing at all, like that. And it's interesting, because there's a little bit like that, when you start to talk to them, they only know a little bit. Or there are people who know everything. So is it better to know everything, just learn and study and know everything? Or is it maybe better just to learn basically how to learn? So you would learn to open each door, because life is extremely strange. Is never the same task. So you need to learn how to learn. You need to learn how to find ideas. This is what you need to do. So open your, your mind for ideas. You need confidence. Most people, why they go and study one thing is mainly because they lack of confidence. They basically need, they don't want to take risks in life. So I need you to take risks. Because if you think about this is everything you know, Everything you know. Most people go a little bit out of the box and do a new thing a little bit for 10 seconds and then they jump into the box again and again and again. So what I need you to do is step out of the ring or out of the box. And to take a risk is something that you have never done before. So what I'm going to ask you to do, I need you next week, I want you to do something you have never done before. Never in your life. Maybe have a speech. Maybe sing a song. Maybe do anything that you have never done before. Try to do it. And try to do it every week of your life. Something. If How many of you have kids? If you would take your kids and you put a little piece of paper and you write down things that you have never done before and you put it in a bowl and on Saturday you pick out one and then you do it, your kids is going to love you. You're going to walk on a mountain, you're going to go to the beach, you're going to run in the water, you're going to do things you have never done before. So get out of the box. Don't be afraid of failure. There is nothing as a failure, such thing as a failure. There's nothing. So failure is actually a success. The more failure you do, the more successful you will become. So please keep doing that. Um, You need 10,000 hours to be good or something. 10,000 hours. That takes about the Beatles. They used to play in Hamburg for almost three years every night. It's 10,000 hours. When they came out, yesterday, all my trouble. Fantastic. Brilliant. So you need 10,000 hours to be good or something. This is where I live. I live there. It's a tiny, tiny place where I come from. It's actually there. It's really, really small. I actually uh, live in this, called Iceland. 
It's only 330,000 people who live there. In my school, there was eight kids in my class. Eight. There was nothing to do there, nothing at all. There was no sports, there was nothing. So the only thing I could do was to practice every day. Practice and practice to, to be better in something. Find something I could do for 10,000 hours. So what I did again and again and again. So what happened at the end is that you can never give up. You can never give up. So I'm going to try one thing. Can you move this hand up and down like this? Can I see it? Just the hand up and down. Let me see it. This is the only movement you're going to do all day. Except maybe drinking tonight. But Okay, so let's take the other hand and make a set. Let me see it. Now move the other hand at the same time. The reason why you cannot do it is not because you're not good. The reason is because you haven't practiced. So practice again and again and again. And you basically have to come with a great idea in your life. What is a great idea? How would you measure a great idea? Now you finish school. I come in front of you now. I come like, ta-da! Here's a great idea. How do you know it's a great idea? How do you know it? What do you think? You're going to make a lot of money out of it? Yes, it's a great idea. I don't have to work a lot. It's a great idea. I'm going to change the world. Great idea. Great idea in, many, in my mind is when anything is possible. That is a great idea. When anything is possible. Think about, if I would say, what about love? You would say, that's a great idea. What about humor? If everyone was laughing, that's a great idea. What about freedom? That would be a great idea. So find great ideas in your life. Find when anything is possible. And there's a rule in business called 111. Have you heard about this rule? Anyone? Okay, I made it up. Okay? No. <laughs> it's a rule. Okay? The rule is 111. It means you get basically you get one point. I'm trying to get one point for the idea. So if you come with an idea, I have an idea. You get one point for it. You think it's great. This is a great idea. I need people to pay a lot of money for this idea. It's not true. You get one point for the idea. Then you get 10 points if you can finance it. But then you get 100 points for basically make it profitable and the execution. So if you have an idea what you want to do in life, Think about the execution, not only how you, what you want to become, but the execution. So, in, there needs to be a gap in the market if you're going to be successful. It needs to be a gap. You have to find the gap. And the gap in the market is quite interesting because 19 years ago, I was in my home thinking, there is basically no... Halle, get rid of it now, Takan. You eat your sex dance There's no entertainment brand dedicated to kids' health in the world. There's nothing. There was nothing. It was, you know Popeye? Popeye? He's Finnish. He smokes and hits people. Poof. Or you think like, ah, maybe he's not a role model. Maybe he's not a good role model. There was no role model for kids. In nothing. So we thought about, let's do something about it. And 19 years ago, I was in my home thinking, how can I do it? I went on a mission to move kids, move families, and to move the world. I went on a mission to basically do this, to motivate families to make healthy lifestyle choices. And I really want to do it worldwide. And I live in a very small town. So I said, let's do it. So I have to explain health. So I thought, how easy can it be? I only have to explain health. So I wrote it up. So I'm going to put it up like this. I can write it and everybody will see it. So if you read it, what does it say? Paris in the spring. But it doesn't say Paris in the spring. It says Paris in the, the spring. So even if I would write it, you still would not get it. So it's not enough to write it up. You basically need much more than that. You basically need... I'm going to explain for you a little bit. I, I was in my home thinking, health. How can I explain health? Kids don't understand health. If you say to a little kid, you're going to eat this apple, 
you're going to be healthy when you're 21. Kids look at you and say, I'm not, never going to be 21. I'm an old man. Kids don't understand it. So the problem was, if you think about football, if I explain football, what I would do is this. I would write down everything about football like this. Write it down, everything. Then I put it on TV. Everybody likes it. And then I would sell it like a business. So what I do is football. I explain it. I show it. I sell it. If I change football into health, the problem starts. If I would go to you and say, what is a healthy person? What is a healthy guy? If he did 500 push-ups in one arm, is he healthy or a lunatic? When I thought I was finished writing everything about health, it's like humor. You cannot write it down. So normally business is that you write down something, an idea. So what happened is this is endless. Because somebody would say, ah, to swim to work is healthy. Oh, really? Okay. Let's put that on the list. Then you cannot put it on TV. It's not allowed to put it on TV. Kids would never watch it. Kids would never watch program about health. Then you cannot sell the business because there is no business. So I was in my home thinking, if I cannot, I cannot explain it. I'm not allowed to show it. And what is the business? 20 years ago, I thought, if I can crack this, then I'm fine. So I'm going to show you. Can you take up a paper? I know you have a paper like this in front of you. So everybody hold the paper like this. It's the last test you're going to do in this school. This is the last test. So hold it like this. You're going to close your eyes. And I am going to give you five directions. And you're going to do it. But if you open your eyes, it's 500 push-ups for the whole group. <laughs> Are you ready? Close your eyes. Five directions. Fold the paper in half. Turn it 180. Fold it to the left. Rip the left corner off. Fold it in half and rip the center off. Okay? Now you can open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open the paper. Nobody has the same paper. Let me see it. No one. <clears throat> No one has the same paper. Nobody, not a single person has the same paper. Look at this. <laughs> if you have the same paper, you should get married. <laughs> or you should work together. I think I got a match. We're going to get married. Yes. <laughs> we got one. The thing is, take this to your office. Take this to your room. Put it in a frame. This is your life. When you think your boyfriend understands you, he doesn't understand you. If you think your mom or dad understands you, they don't understand you. If you are working and you think you are explained to people, when you have people working for you, they don't understand you. I, this is what I told you because it was not your fault, it was my fault. Because I didn't tell you properly how to do it. But I said, fold the paper in half, turn into 180, fold it, corner off, half, center. I said everything, but we didn't do it. Think about if you have to explain something who is really, really difficult, like an idea about health, how many messages you need to put out for the world is enormous. So this is the underground of London. This is the underground of London, reality. If you take a picture of the underground of London, this is how it looks like. This is the job of a 70 years old man who drew all this map, drew up this map. Do you know how much money it saved the company for this guy to do this? Millions of people can go whatever they like in life. Somebody can take from Oxford Circus just a little bit. Somebody can do something else. So I need you to draw a map of a mess of the life. So take an idea, whatever you want to fix, the financer, the Spain, the crisis, put the map. Draw the map. Then, you need a team. I wanted to create a team in Lazy Town who would go out for the world and save the world. So I need a very good team. So I get the best driver, I get the best engine, I get the best wheel. Everything is the best. Cost an enormous amount of money. Then, finally, I'm going to go on the race. We're going to win the Formula One. We are ready to go. Everybody's there. Cost a lot of money. We have one chance, and we're going to go. 
Suddenly, there's one person missing. Is the missing the person who's cleaning the helmet <coughs> of the guy? <coughs> That's it. Just cleaning the helmet. <coughs> and when you do that, you normally have an intern to do that. And the intern <coughs> is going to clean the helmet. You are going to go for a race. Everybody's ready to go. You say, go! And the intern is maybe out smoking. And he doesn't do... <coughs> it's a tiny work. <coughs> but he doesn't do it. The whole operation is finished. So I need you in work, in school, in your relationship, anywhere you do in life, don't be the person who does this <coughs> or doesn't do it. You have to do it. So you know what is happening when you have a team. You know what the guy is here is yelling. What is this guy yelling with the ax? What is he yelling? What do you think he's yelling at his team? He's not good in football. He cannot score as many goals as Messi, why is he yelling? Why wouldn't Messi just stop and say, hey, you do it yourself? What is he yelling? What do you think? He is yelling, focus. Focus! Focus! Keeping the team together. So, be more specific. You can ask 200 times to be more specific. Basically, what we do in Lazy Town, we turn turn it into a game. We take boring things and make it into a game for kids. So how is it done? One person genius is you guys. I'm going to hire you or I hope I can work for you. Or 99% hard work. And I want to make a one more big applause for your parents because some of them, maybe all of them, made an enormous amount of hard work to pay for your college, pay for your whole thing, not college, for the whole thing. So I want to give a big applause one more time. I want to like, way. <laughs> you have to be careful. The timing is everything. You have to be right on the wrong time. So basically what happened is a challenge. If you think about every generation have lived longer than the other one, this is the first time in history that kids are going to die before their parents. It never happens before in history of life, e ever. So, look at this. There's going to be obesity, 700 million people obese in the world, 2015. There are going to be 400 million kids, or 155 million kids around the world. What we're up against is the kids are eating all kinds of junk. Parents don't know what to buy. The market is full of messes that nobody understands. Every single kid's brand is a mess. They have been going and selling kids junk again and again and again and again and again, killing hundreds or hundreds of kids. I'm going to show you a video. We took a woman to try to shop something healthy for three minutes. We asked her to fill the basket. Three minutes. Something healthy. She started. It was not a problem in the beginning. She took fruit and vegetables, not a problem. Then she started to go for maybe to read the labels for the juices and banana was okay. And then suddenly juices was a problem. Was not allowed to have anything unhealthy, only healthy. Then she had problems, there was biscuits, problem, problem, problems, salt was a problem. And then suddenly the time was up. So the basket was not even full. She finished the three minutes and there was one thing unhealthy in the basket. So we asked her to do it again. Now she can only take unhealthy, nothing healthy, but we're gonna blindfold her. She's not allowed to see anything. You can shop and fill the basket. She went, she took things randomly, just anything from the shelf. She couldn't see anything at all. Just took things, tried to fill the basket in three minutes. Just shop. And what happened is that after 38 seconds was left, she couldn't even find the basket sometimes. 38 seconds was left, she filled the basket with junk. Everything was unhealthy in it. So what does it tell us? It tells us with your eyes open, you cannot shop healthy. With your eyes closed, you cannot even buy healthy stuff. So there's a lot of opportunities in the food business if you want to go there. There's a lot of opportunity in the retail business. There's a lot of opportunity in a lot of businesses. So if you think there is not a business out there, there's thousands of businesses. So his story, Halim, you're right. 
No role model for kids in health. Can educate more healthy lifestyle be entertaining? This was the challenge. So we created Lazy Town. And the Lazy Town is a guy called Sporagut, who is a superhero. He can do any movement that there is in the world. Anything. Who is the strongest guy in this group? Who is the strongest man here? In the school? Who is that? Can you come? I'm really sorry to put you through this, but can you do me a favor? This is for being late, isn't it? <laughs> yes, this is, this is because you came late. Yeah, yeah, I know. Are you okay? Yes? Yeah, absolutely. Can you do one push up for the group? One push up. Yes. Yeah, one. <laughs> Just here, yes. Very good. Okay, stay there. So, and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask you to do one thing, and I'm going to help you. Okay. So, Put one hand up, like here, and then one leg. Can you hold it? Three seconds. One, two, three. Perfect, yes. Excellent. Fantastic. I pass. You pass. Thank you very much. And I'm going to show you later a little bit like... You have the villain, Robbie Rotten. What Sporogus does, he leads by examples. So around the world, kids bring me fruit and vegetables wherever I go. I go to 170 countries, and wherever I go, I meet millions of kids, wherever I go, doing all kinds of things, and it's an amazing experience. Uh, what does this character come from in this show? It comes from this. I went to... 11 years to 52 different countries to speak to parents and kids. We found out that parents are exactly the same in Spain, Iceland, Uruguay, wherever you go, Russia. Exactly the same. Kids are exactly the same. Kids love to move. So if you say to a kid, you want to go to the movie theater? They say yes. When you graduate, you said yes. Why? Because you are happy. So if your kid doesn't move, there's something wrong. So, there are seven elements that kids, when you're raising kids, so when you're going to raise kids, listen to this. Everyone wants your kids to be safe and educated. Eat right, healthy lifestyle, early to bed, follow rules, able to share things, not lie and cheat. Maybe number eight, clean the room, maybe. Those are the lazy town characters. So, if we have to explain health, I would say it's about balance. That's what it is. So, what... All kids are superheroes. I saw there were some kids there. Where are the kids? I saw a girl there. A little girl. Where is he? Come. Chip, chip, chip. Nadia, come. Hola. Hola. Wow, hola. Wow. Wow. Okay, can you click this for me? Okay, so all kids are superheroes. They basically always believe there's a way, every single kid. They have strength to follow their hearts, and they're always moving, basically. So kids can do whatever they like. Hola. Okay, so we basically tested Lazy Don't Start as a book. It was a live show. It was basically a music show. It was a game. It was a radio station. And we increased sales of fruit and vegetables by 22% in my country. I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it when I in increased fr fruit and vegetable sales in my country 22%. So what happened with math on the kids around the world? We obesity of my country went down. And I was watching TV. I was watching TV. And the health minister was on the news. And he said, why is the obesity going in Iceland down? He said, because of lazy town. And I said, what? So I called him. And what happened? They wrote a letter for me, how much impact it has on the country. Look here. The president of Iceland sent me a letter. OK. Hola. Hello. <laughs> so we knew we needed to take lazy town around the world. So we started as a TV. 
We built a studio, it was the most high-tech studio in the world. We got people who did Tomb Raider, James Bond, to do this. We went to 500 million homes. We went to 172 different countries. We won a BAFTA award. It was the biggest award for kids' entertainment ever. Boys and girls watch it. Parents watch it. We are in the media like crazy. We can go to Parents magazine. We can go to Life magazine. We can go to any magazine and talk about this issue because it's an issue that every parents are going through every day. We go to raise money for kids who need money. We raised almost 50 million. We go round one to hospitals to try to do something. We put a live show. 1.3 million people saw it. We sold faster tickets than you two in Mexico City. We did marathon that 20,000 kids run every year. What are? And just like, like this, we are doing this in Spain. We are doing it in uh, Argentina, uh, Bulgaria. I went to, into a retail to try to increase sales in England. We increased sales 28% in England and 41% of fruit and vegetable in the biggest stores. In Mexico City, in Mexico, they had a huge problem. So United States came to us and said, can we increase? Yavawa, okay. <laughs> you wanna go? To mama? And then, what happened? You can, can you run for me? Wawa? Okay. Thank you. Give big applause. <laughs> this was the highest campaign from the United States to Mexico in seven years. So, when you go out there now, have a vision where you wanna go. Look at this. It's gonna take a long time. Maybe it's gonna look like this, then you're going to look like this, and then you're going to look like this. It's going to take you 19 years. So don't give up. You're going to hire people who are going to start to do this, and then this, and then this, and this, and this. This is what Lazyton did. This is what I saw. This is what I got. This is what I saw. This is what I got. This is for some sportagus. This is what I got in the beginning. And I said to the guy, no, no, change it, change it. After five years, it looks like this. And then again, I tried to change it, please. Then it looks like this in the end. So it took a long time. So if you have a vision, it's going to take a long time. But now we are right on the right time. So government are calling me up, David Cameron, to ask me to how I can fix England. How can I make England healthy? Uh, Colombia, uh, Germany, Italy, uh, Philip Calderon, Mexico. And now, I was in Chile now, coming from, and then the end, Michelle Obama. What you need is a beat. So you need to give your, for your family, for your life, as a politician, what is the beat? So there's the last point is here. My last point is this. You should basically, if you tell somebody, someone, Itawa, tell me and I will forget. You have to show me, and maybe I'm going to remember this. If you involve me, then I will understand. So it's extremely important that you involve people. So in the end of the day, I'm going to show you one thing before we leave. If, when you come home tonight, I want you to try one push-up when you come home. And I'm sure in 19 years, when I'm going to meet you again, you can do it. And you can try to do it like this. Are you ready? OK, good luck. Congratulations. And thank you very much, and good luck, and have a good party tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Very impressive. Well, obviously. No words can actually match this kind of 
uh, performance. Uh, Winston Churchill used to say, don't practice too much sport, otherwise you will lose health. Um, just, just a very uh, quick last words. I'm, I'm very worried that I'm the last thing before you, you and the cocktail, so I'll be very short. Um, this is very, those, for those who have not been here, obviously, for the last months, this is a very special class. Um, not because the gift, I won't forget that, but because there have been many points of transition during this year, or year and a half. There was a move from Barcelona to San Cugat, and I remember very well the times in which I had to explain to you why things were going to be changed, and so on and so forth. I have to tell you that you've behaved maturely and to some extent exquisitely in the way feedback was given, and we really appreciated that. So to some extent, I want to give you my feedback. You are people of very high quality. Gloria has mentioned before that knowledge is, uh, you've gained it, you have it. So when you combine knowledge with human quality, people will be expecting from you the very best. You have to some extent a responsibility for yourselves, definitely, but for many people, for society at large. During the last years, I've been helping one board of a large company in the United States to select the new CEO, and I've been interviewing a number of people. Um, I have to tell you that not everybody has a clear meaning of the word, what the word success means. And my very last words would be actually to encourage you to find your own meaning. It's not something that come out, comes out of figures. It's not something that comes out of abstract values. It has to come out of the meaning you put into things. So I wish you a very meaningful life, both professionally and personally, and uh, also to be able to embody the, current, the values that have been mentioned before. Some of your peers mentioned being humble, being courageous. There are many others. Fight for them. Be faithful for them. Not everything will be clear. You will find a lot of times yourselves at crossroads with situations that are far from certain and far from, far from clear. Probably your, already, your only guidance at this point will be this, getting hold of these values and being faithful to them. This is it. Esare is your home at this point. I welcome at this, at this point to Esare as graduates, and I hope that you will be up to the task that is ahead to you. Thank you very much. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Cocktails will be served over there, so follow my hand. Thank you.